hey, what's good? How do you even introduce one of these things? Ah, I'm so awkward! Oh my god, it's been a while. I don't even remember how to do this anymore. I basically took a little break from YouTube just because I didn't really know what I wanted people to get from my YouTube. Like, I didn't know what I wanted people to come on here to look at, to see. And so I kind of just waited until I had an idea and then here I am. I'm back for good this time. Hey. Um, so yeah, I have all these little questions on my laptop. I am gonna basically answer all of these. There's a lot to get through. I basically did a little um, question on Instagram and I said, ask me anything and I'll answer it. So here we are. I'm really nervous. It's really weird talking to yourself. <laughs> Number one, would you rather be a pirate or a cowboy and why? Hmm, what would I rather be? I think I'd rather be a pirate because I love boats, I love the ocean and I love Peter Pan. <laughs> what do you like most about traveling the world? I like experiencing different cultures, seeing beautiful places, trying all the food, the memories I make with the friends that I go with. That's it really. Can we get a cookbook please? Well, in January I am actually releasing my first ever ebook. So I've been doing this now for about three years, been posting recipes now for however long. Um, so I thought it was about time I put it all together in one place. So there's an ebook of 40 recipes coming out for Veganuary. It's all plant based, but I promise you all the recipes are so delicious that you won't even miss meat or dairy. If I do say so much. What do you have for breakfast on a regular day? That's hard, I mix it up. I have a few favourites, like a few staples. So I do love some uh, fried mushrooms with sourdough toast and avocado, which I make at home. Or I love porridge. I make it with almond milk, crumble in some dark chocolate and some berries. But there will be uh, recipes in the new book for you all to check out. Has your body always been fire or have you had a transformation? First of all, thank you. That's really nice that you said my body's fire. But um, no, I have had a transformation. I went from being really super skinny. I had an eating disorder to then kind of... I'd say my transformation's been more mental than physical in terms of I've learned to be balanced with my fitness and my food and things like that. So I went from being like all skin and bone to learning to deal with having muscle and like putting on muscle and stuff. But that has taken a long time. It's taken like two years to finally be happy with my body. So yeah. Favourite vegan foods and recipes? <laughs> in my book, duh. On a scale of one to Uncle Ben's, how much do you love rice? I freaking love rice. Rice is like my favourite thing. I love rice. I have it at least once a day. I love rice. Um, why did you choose dancing? So, my mum took me to dancing on Saturday, kind of to make friends um, as a social thing. And so I started doing it and I literally fell in love with it. Like I was never sporty as a kid. So it went from being three hours on a Saturday to being there nine until six and then wanting to do it on a Thursday and a Friday after school and I literally dedicated all of my spare time to dancing. There's actually so many stories of me in like chip shops and stuff like tap dancing. You could not get me to stay still and yeah I think it was just like a childhood dream that I then studied professionally. Next. How have you managed to stay so positive and optimistic through all the changes this past year? Okay so on here you probably don't know I had a really savage breakup at the beginning of the year. I'm not going to dwell on it but it was a big change. My boyfriend at the time was living in my family home. He obviously moved out, had to deal with kind of that dynamic changing. I've done a lot more traveling this year than I probably have in my whole entire life. And it was hard to, to adjust to like a new form of routine. I didn't have a routine. I didn't have someone waiting for me every time I came home. It was very different, but I'm very fortunate to have amazing friends, amazing family, and they definitely kept me positive. But also a lot of it did come from me being positive myself. So I did loads of things, like I did loads of journaling. I kind of looked at it as I had so much time now. So I wasn't always planning my schedule around another person. It was literally just me choosing what I want to do. So I did loads of things like go to art galleries, dance classes, things that I know make me happy. And then if you know you, you have control of your mindset and you know that you have the ability to change it, you choose to look for the positives rather than kind of dwelling on the negatives. And I think that was kind of how I did it if that makes sense. Do you still have an eating disorder voice? Okay, so I've mentioned this before. The only way I can explain it when I had an eating disorder, and I had bulimia for four years, and it was like there was a little voice in my head telling me what to do, telling me to make myself sick, or to not eat that, or that kind of thing. I think that little voice does creep up sometimes. It's only when I'm super stressed, or emotional, or hormonal, uh, which is a lot of the time. I've learnt now to not listen to it, so if it does come into my head, instead of 
really thinking about it, you kind of just learn to turn it down. So I just actively, whenever I hear that voice, know that I'm stronger than that voice and tell myself that I don't need to listen to it. It's like if someone came up to you in the middle of the street and just started screaming at you, you just walk away. Or you'd be like, you're a widow, and like, call the police or something. But yeah, so that's kind of what I've learned to do, is how to turn it down and just not listen to it. Hardest thing about being vegan. Do you know what it is? There's, there's this really negative thing around being vegan and being different, and, and a lot of my closest friends kind of take the piss out of me a little bit. They'll be like, oh, who's the vegan, the difficult one? And I think the hardest thing is kind of not biting back at those comments, because... It's a personal choice, like I've never been preachy, I've never told anyone in my life, in my family, that they need to be vegan or whatever. So I did find it really difficult at first, dealing with the comments from other people, but then you just have to kind of remember that you're doing it for your reasons, for yourself, and it doesn't matter what anyone else thinks. Other than that, at first it was chocolate, but there's so many good vegan chocolates out there, and also travelling. Sometimes when you're travelling, especially in Europe and Asia to be fair, they have no idea what vegetarian is, let alone vegan, so they put cheese on everything, they put meat on everything, so you just have to learn to be demanding and picky. Like, if you see something on a menu, and you see that they've got, like, a side of rice and they've got sautéed vegetables as another side, just ask for both of those together or something. I think that's what I found the hardest thing. How did you meet your new man? Well, it was the night of the semi-final of the World Cup. Me and my best friend Harry organised for a group of my mates and a group of his mates to go to a pub in London and to watch it. So I was dressed as a cheerleader, and one of his mates was unbelievable so I literally walked into the pub and I was like who's he ran over to Harry and was like put a word in I fancy that one and kind of like claimed him for the evening and then just spent the whole evening with him I had a really good time we all ended up clubbing afterwards he asked my number took me on a date and he knows this he won't be offended if I say this but at first I was like oh he's too nice I was like oh no he's too much of a nice guy like I need a bad boy but no he just completely won me over he was amazing he's he's just so kind and lovely and my dream, basically. So that's how I met him. Oh, this is a bit savage. How did you heal so fast after a breakup? Do you know what? I wouldn't say I healed fast. There are still moments when you get down about it. Not about me longing to be with that person anymore, but the fact that you lose someone that you were so close with. I wouldn't say that I healed fast at all. There was a long time of me crying at home, not wanting to go out, that kind of thing. And I was never actively looking for a boyfriend or to get over it. It kind of happened naturally. And I genuinely do think that is because I kept such a positive mindset. It's, it's hard, you have good days and you have bad days. So there was days when I was so low and crying, but then the next day I'd be like, okay, fresh start, new day. It wasn't me pushing away my emotions, it was just me flipping my mindset and being like, okay, what can I look forward, forward to? What can I make a positive in my life? And I think that is why it happened so quickly. If I was to sit at home all day, listen to sad songs in the dark then I think it would have taken a lot longer. Everyone's healing process is different and also it depends on the breakup. Originally my breakup was very mutual and on good terms so I think that made it a lot easier. Why did you turn off your Instagram story replies? If the option is there for people to reply people are just putting like laughing faces and because I make a conscious effort to reply to every DM that I get it was getting really draining for me. I was on my phone constantly, constantly. I never put it down. And I thought if I turn off the story replies, maybe that'll stop some of the instant messages and people only message me if it's like a question or things like that. And honestly, as much as I love speaking to people and I still do speak to people a lot, it just, it's literally cut like four hours of phone time off my day. Okay, four hours might be a bit dramatic, but it's, it's definitely stopped me being on my phone as much. And I kind of just, no offence, had to do it for my own mental health because I was literally giving out so much through social media and stuff that it was just getting a little bit draining. That did really. What's your number one beauty product? Oh my god, that's so hard. At the moment, for my hair, I'm using Maui Moisture Curl Milk. Basically, I did a collaboration with them on Instagram and they sent me some stuff for my hair because it's like really frizzy naturally and it's the most amazing thing. I was so happy to work with them because I was like, this is amazing and I've continued using it since. It's unbelievable and all the ingredients are vegan. I'm such a fidget. I've just realised, literally every five seconds, I think it's because I'm nervous, I'm literally like... Anyway. La, 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 la. How long have you had a large following for? Um... I've been posting this Instagram page now for about three and a half years and it's kind of grown very slowly um, but consistently so probably I'd say it's been classed as like large for maybe about a year, year and a half maybe. How do you stay motivated and keep training and eating well? So I'd say I was motivated 
90% of the time but I think from doing it consistently now for a very long time I know I feel better in my body and in my mind when I'm training well and eating well. In terms of eating well I mean having nutritious, nutrient dense food, loads of vegetables and having quite a balanced relationship with food. I'll have chocolate if I want it, I don't restrict myself in any way but I'm very mindful of what I'm eating. But to stay motivated I think putting dates in the diary with friends is a really good one so booking into a class and saying you'll meet a friend because then you can't let them down so you kind of have to go that's a really good way. I actually am a trainer on an app called Fit, I'll put the um, link in the caption below but they they now do fit plans which is like six week plans that will give you a class every day to do on the app that you can do at home it's all body weight you just need a mat and your phone and that's really good because it, it's encouraging you and telling you what classes to do and I think sometimes when you have someone screaming at you through a screen or even in person it motivates you a lot more do you still speak to Luke no did you go to uni, if so where? No, I didn't go to uni. I went to a professional dance college for three years from the age of 16 to 19, which kind of class is my uni? No, academic qualifications. <laughs> I just fixed my hair because she was frizzy. Do you ever think you'll do Stay Sassy out of London? Well, I just did my first event outside of London in Manchester and there is talks for next year doing a tour around the UK because I really, really want to meet as many people as possible and just kind of take Stay Sassy worldwide. That's the dream. Girl, I'm thirsty. Ooh, this is my favourite glass ever. It's still fun. How did you become so body positive? Do you know what? It has taken me a very long time. I was very self-critical, especially when I had my eating disorder. I had this whole messed up view on body image. I think because I have so much positive things around me, and I think they were there before, but now I just see them. My body's the kind of last thing I look at. Because now I'm eating plant-based because of ethical views and animal rights, I'm no longer eating for myself or aesthetics, I'm eating for a bigger reason. And I think that has been a huge shift in my mindset because I'm no longer eating to be skinny. I'm eating food that I know is good for my health, but also saving animals and the world. Best retreats for going on solo. I go away quite a lot with New Horizon Escapes, sometimes as a guest, sometimes as a trainer. They are unbelievable because some retreats I've been on have been really intense, what's the word I'm looking for? Really full on itineraries, which is great if that's what you're looking for. But what I love about the New Horizon Escapes is you have your workouts, you have your excursions, but you have a lot of downtime, you have a lot of options. It's usually quite a lot of solo travellers, which means because everyone's on their own, you have to mingle more, which I absolutely adore. I've made friends for life on these retreats, couldn't rec recommend them more. I'm actually a trainer on one of them. In March, I'm going to Koh Tao. It's their most adventurous escapes. It's cliff jumping, trapeze, Mai Tai, all of that kind of stuff. I'm so excited, I'm going by myself. So if anyone wants to join me, I'll put the link at the bottom of the caption too, so that you can come and join me. <sighs> so many of these questions are about Luke. Um, why did you and Luke break up? It just wasn't working. Have you always been into fitness slash sport as a child? Absolutely not. I was picked for last for every sports day, every team. I was so unsporty, I could not think of anything worse. The amount of sick notes I forged to get me out of sport. Um, I was more into the kind of art, DT, creative side, but also science. Like, I absolutely loved science. Sport was not my forte. Awful. No, absolutely not. Although I was goalie in hockey because if anyone has played hockey before, you know that the goalie has to wear the massive headgear and the massive suit and you literally feel invincible. And the only reason I got on the team was because no other girl wanted to wear the suit and I just wanted to be on the team. So yeah. Do you live in London? No, I live just outside of London in Kent. How old are you? I am 22. Do you ever find the dance industry a difficult place to be? When I first graduated from dance college, I found it such a difficult place to be. I found that it was very based on aesthetics and the rejection from auditions was awful because you question everything about yourself, not just your dance ability. But now I feel like I'm in a much better place and you have to learn to have a really thick skin in this industry and not take everything super personally. What is your favourite kind of exercising? I love mixing it up. I love everything from dancing. I've really got into yoga recently. I still love weight training, but I also love body weight training too. I'll maybe weight lift three times a week, one yoga class, one dance class, or a body weight in between that. But I think it's finding what's, what's right for you. There's so many different varieties. So when people are like, oh, I don't like exercise, it's like, well, have you tried everything, you know? 
mix up, try new classes, put yourself out of your comfort zone, that kind of thing. Have you experienced trouble to find vegan food when travelling? Yes. It's very hard when travelling. You have to be very picky. There's sometimes a language barrier. It can be really difficult and stressful. I always take snacks in my suitcase. I don't know if that's legal. I'm gonna look into that. But yeah, I always take little snacks in my suitcase so that I always have something to fall back on. It is really hard because sometimes the only vegan option is chips or, or bread and you don't want to just live off of that. So you, you just have to ask. Google Translate is great. If you t translate things exactly what you want into the language, you can then press a little voice button and play it to the person and then they'll be able to kind of understand it and know what you're asking for. Can you give tips on how to do side splits? Ah, oh, yes I can. What I might do actually is, because I don't want to demonstrate right now because I'm in a dressing gown, I might do a whole video on stretching and how I became more flexible for you. Yeah, I'm going to do that. Okay, stay tuned. Hit the subscribe button so you don't miss it. Do you drink protein shakes? If so, what ones? Yes, I drink protein shakes. I have one either for breakfast loaded with oats and peanut butter and stuff like that, or post-workout. I'm actually an ambassador for my protein. I don't think I've mentioned that on here. Um, I'm really excited to be part of their family. They have an insane vegan range. Their chocolate smooth, smooth chocolate from the vegan range is unbelievable. When did you have your first period? Oh my god, I had my first period so late. I think I must have been at the end of like 16, early 17. I remember I was at school and everyone had started their period and I hadn't and I lied about it and used to just carry period pads in my bag. And so if anyone ever came on, I could be like, oh, I've got a period pad. Or if all my friends were on at the same time, I'd be like, oh yeah, I'm on my period too. Um, just because I felt so out of the loop and I felt so young and immature because I hadn't started it, which is so stupid now looking back at it. But yeah, I started quite late. I was like 16 or 17. Have you got any cosmetic surgery? Nope. Um, what's it like dating a non-vegan guy? Um, so yeah, my boyfriend isn't vegan. He's not vegetarian either, but he is so respectful to me. So if ever I'm cooking a vegan meal, he'll sit and eat that with me. He enjoys cooking vegan too, so he makes me a lot of vegan food. He's actually really respectful. He chooses to eat more plant-based stuff around me, which I really love. I don't make him at all. I think he's on his own journey and, and he's a professional athlete. So at the moment he feels he needs that meat sauce, um, which is fine. I'm never going to push him, but he's definitely reducing his intake, which I really respect. How many calories do you eat in a day? I could honestly not tell you. I haven't tracked in a very long time. Who is your favourite dance inspo? <sighs> There's so many. There's a dancer in the UK called Chloe Ferns, who's actually a good friend of mine. She's incredible. Adore her, could watch her dance all day. There's a guy called Ainsley Ricketts, again, could watch him dance all day. There's an American dancer called Jade Chenoweth, I think her Instagram's Jade Bug. Unbelievable, never seen anything like it. And then there's a choreographer and dancer called Jojo Gomez. Unbelievable, check all of those out. Do you ever plan on going fully blonde again? Hell to the no. I went blonde because I was in a girl band. <laughs> what a throwback. And it was just didn't suit me, made my hair fall out because it was so bleached and dry and I was curling it all the time. Never again. I think I'm a brunette through and through. Never fully blonde again. What do you like most about being vegan? Uh, I love the cooking side of things. So I love experimenting with new recipes and finding replacements where I usually just use meat or dairy. I love that. It's like a little challenge. Are you ticklish? Yes. Is someone outside my room? So I, was, I thought someone was eavesdropping and it was just the dog. Um, how did you know your boyfriend was right for you? We'd gone on a few dates and he was making me happy, he was making me laugh, he was really kind. You could tell he had a huge heart and I was ridiculously attracted to him because he's mighty fine. But um, I realised he was right for me when there was a time I went to stay at his and he'd stocked up on loads of vegan ingredients and had made the effort to research a recipe, cooked it for me, woke me up the next day with vegan food um, that he'd researched again or and I'd already made him that meal um, and he replicated it because he knew it was one of my favourites and it was just little things like that and then he got injured in one of his rugby games and we had to go to A&E. We were stuck in this little room whilst he was getting stitches for about four hours because the person kept messing up the stitches. And we literally just got on so well and it was just two of us in a room and we had to kind of entertain each other. And I just had this feeling, it sounds so cringe, but just like this feeling that it was right. And then the more and more time we spent together, the more I just felt myself falling for him. And just, he added to my life in every single way. We have so much in common in terms of our views on on food and training and travel and music 
because he added to my life in every single way I knew that he was he was right for me um yeah I think that's I think that's all Will you be vegan forever? Right now, I can visualise myself being vegan forever because I'm really enjoying it and it sits well with my lifestyle. But you never know what's going to happen and what's going to change. My goal right now is to be vegan forever. If you could change one thing about your journey so far, what would it be? That's a hard question. I think any time I've made a mistake or messed up in my journey so far, I've learnt from it and grown from it. But one thing that I would definitely change is just the rate at what I realised that you don't have to be friends with everyone. I think there was a time in my life when I was constantly running around trying to make everyone else around me happy and kind of let my own happiness slip and it took me a very long time to realise that I was doing that. So I think the one thing I would change is kind of speeding up that process. Are you tired of your life being on display? Do you ever want to quit social media? I choose to put my life on display. I choose what I put on display. I'm very open online and I'm happy to be, but I don't ever get tired of it because it's a way of me dealing with everyday life. It's a way of me venting to people, I'm happy to help people hopefully with my stories. No, I don't get tired of it and if ever I do want to have a day off I don't make a big announcement like oh I'm going to have a day off, I just won't post and then yeah I feel like I've got quite a balanced relationship with it now. Do you have any tattoos? Yes, I have two. I have one on my wrist, uh, which is two stars, which represents my nan and me. One of my amazing followers, Sophie, she's followed me now for almost four years. She named two stars in the night sky, she paid to name them and they have the same coordinates and it's one named after me and one named after my nan. I'm obsessed with the night sky, I'm obsessed with stars and it basically means me and my nan will never be apart. So that's what that means. And then I have a wave, I'm not going to show you now, but I have a wave on my rib. How do you deal with negativity from people? If it's on social media, if it's just outright negative, block and delete, if it's just unnecessary. If it's someone's opinion, I thank them for their opinion and kind of explain my point of view in a polite way. Do you have any pet hates? People taking my food without asking. Why? No. Ask. I'll probably say no, but don't just take it. Something you couldn't live without. My bed, my mum, my family. Naps. Couldn't live without naps. I love nap. Key to a successful relationship. I think it's compromise and it's learning what the other person wants and what you want and making that work together. Speaking openly, constantly talking about things, speaking about problems before they become a problem. So if there's something that's worrying you or concerning you, straight away being like, okay, alarm bell this made me sad rather than letting it fester inside and then exploding and causing bigger arguments definitely that um, and cuddles lots and lots of cuddles that is the last question so that's it for now um i'll probably do another one of these in a couple months i have more plans for more regular youtube videos it feels good to be back as nerve-wracking as this was i'm sorry as well if i spoke really fast that's probably gonna be my mum's first comment she's gonna watch this and be like you spoke too fast but i'm just really nervous thank you so much for watching it does feel really good to be back i'm excited to vlog more and if there's anything you want to see please comment below don't forget to subscribe and i will see you soon